So I was just thinking about running and praying. This is what I mean. King David wrote Psalm 34, and the title says that he wrote it when he changed his behavior before Abimelech so that he drove him out and he went away. Very strange. Well, the backstory is in 1 Samuel chapter 21. We're told that David is running away from Saul, who is threatened by David's leadership. And so David makes his way to the city of Gath uh, so that he could blend into the population and be safe. And when he's there, some employees of the king of that city, his name is Achish. In the psalm, he's called um, Abimelech. So it could be two different names of the same guy, or Abimelech could be a title. The word actually means father king. So Achish, the father king. Um, so one of his employees there in Gath recognizes David and reports it to him. And so now he's in big trouble. And Psalm 34 is, is written about that event. And David is worshiping God, praising God uh, for rescue from that situation. God rescues him from that narrow escape. And David gives God all the credit. In, in verse uh, 4, he says, I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and he delivered me from my fears. In verse 6, this poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. And then in verse 17, when the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. So David is giving all the credit to God for saving him from being captured in Gath. And yet, when you go back and read the account, the backstory in 1 Samuel 21, we see that David wasn't passive in the situation. He's giving God all the credit, but he's not passive. And when we read the story, we're told that in order to protect himself, he changed his behavior uh, before them, and he pretended to be insane. And this, the passage actually says that he made marks on the doors of the gate, and he lay, let his spittle run down his beard. So he fakes insanity. And, um, you know, the king ends up saying, who is this, you know, that you brought to me? This isn't David. This is some crazy person. So I think what David is showing us here is the importance of depending on God, but also the importance of using our wit in desperate situations. I think there's a New Testament example of this as well. In Acts chapter 9, the newly converted Paul has uh, become the target of the religious authorities because he's, well, he's a traitor. And they're, they're seeking to kill him. And we're told in Acts chapter 9, this is the response of this is the response of the disciples. It says here um, that the disciples took him by night and they let him down through the window um, in a basket, lowering him down in a basket. So again, the disciples show us the importance of using our wit in desperate situations. An old story, a brother and sister are walking to school and suddenly they hear the school bell in the distance and they realize that they're late. And the brother says to the sister, we're late, let's stop and pray. And the sister says to the brother, let's run and pray. When you find yourself in a tough situation, pray, pray, pray. And when God comes to your defense, give him all the worship and give him all the credit. As Psalm 34, 22 says, the Lord redeems the life of his servants. He's the one who sets us free. So the Lord gives us deliverance and we give him the credit, but the Lord also gives us wisdom. So the moral of the story is let's run 
and pray. Until next time, the Lord be with you.